example two. Just like example one, we're going to follow the five steps, even though the question is only asking us about horizontal oblique asymptotes and write the equations of these asymptotes, we are going to graph it completely. So step one, we always need to factor completely. So the top factors to x plus 7, x minus 1. Okay, so we list our non permissible values. X can't equal negative 2. Notice nothing simplifies. Since nothing simplifies, that tells us that the non permissible value is going to be a vertical asymptote and not a whole. Second, we look at horizontal asymptotes or oblique asymptotes. In this example, the degree the degree is bigger in your numerator. If your degree is bigger in your numerator and nothing has simplified, in this case it hasn't, we will have an oblique asymptote. To find your oblique asymptote, you need to use synthetic division. Our equation was x squared plus 6x minus 7, and we're dividing by x plus 2, so you have a negative 2 out in front. Bring down the 1, multiply add, multiply, add, and if you wrote your division statement your answer would be x plus 4 with the remainder of negative 5, but for the oblique asymptote, you can ignore the remain remainder. Whatever you get as the equation becomes your oblique asymptote. So again, once you've found both of your asymptotes, or all of your asymptotes, you can start graphing. We know that we have a vertical asymptote. at x equals 2, and now we have an oblique asymptote at y equals x plus 4, so that would mean I have a y-intercept at 4, and I graph the line y equals x plus 4, y-intercept of 4, Slope of 1. Okay. So now we've done both of our asymptotes. And we've got our graph started. Step 3 there, I mean step 4, now we need some points. And we need one point per section. Again, okay, and this is sometimes, as far as the sections go, sometimes confusing for students. There's only two sections. The sections are when x is less than 2 and when x is bigger than 2. 
your vertical asymptote splits up your domain into two sections. So we need to find all of our intercepts. Again, the y-intercept is the easiest. That's plugging in 0 for x. And I mean, I will write it out for now. But usually the y-intercept students will just be like, oh, I can just see that it is at negative 7 over 2. Really easy to do that mental math when x is 0. So I can put that point on my graph. 7 over 2 is negative 3.5. So I have 0 comma negative 7 over 2. It's important that you label your um, x-intercepts, y-intercepts on your graph as points because they become your scale. If you don't label any points on your graph, you don't have a scale in. Okay? The x-intercepts plug in 0 for y, and it will be really easy if you use the factored form. So I'm going to write out the factored form, which is x plus 7, x minus 1 over x plus 2. Again, you only need to look at where your numerator is equal to 0. And since it's already factored, we know that we have an x-intercept at negative 7 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. So I can add those points onto my graph as well. All right, we found our mistake. It was just small. What was our non-permissible value? x can't equal negative 2. So then our vertical asymptote should be at x equals negative 2. You see how we just forgot that negative? So I've got to go to my graph. I need to move my dotted line over to x equals negative 2. That is much better. I'm sorry. We forgot a negative. And one of the things that was going to happen is my graph wasn't going to move towards my asymptotes nice. Now I can put in, I have an x-intercept at 1, I'm going to label that one at 1, comma 0, and label my other one. negative 7 comma 0. Our graph is divided into two sections, values less than negative 2 and values bigger than negative 2. Do you see that we have one point when x is less than negative 2 and we have two points when x is bigger than negative 2? We do not need to add any more points for this graph. We can go right away to the last thing, which is just draw your graph towards the asymptote. I'll connect those points. Got to go towards an asymptote there and towards an asymptote there. And in this section, towards the asymptote there and towards the asymptote there. This is our final graph. Okay. There, it doesn't exist in these parts between those two asymptotes. This is the final graph, complete. Now we can look at part B. 
The equation of part B is exactly the same, except things have been flipped. So now the x plus 2 is on the top. And the x plus 7 and x minus 1 is on the bottom. And we go through these same steps. We start looking at our non-permissible values. Our non-permissible values, x can't equal now negative 7 and x can't equal 1. Nothing cancels. So those will be vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 7 and x equals 1. Now that we flipped it, we have a degree larger in our denominator. Anytime your degree is larger in your denominator, your horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. So we can start by graphing this. One vertical asymptote at x equals negative 7, another vertical asymptote at x equals 1, and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Let's find some points, starting with your y-intercept. If you plug in 0 for x, you get 2 over negative 7. So we go and label that point. Plug in 0 for y. The only time your fraction will equal 0. Doesn't even matter what's in your denominator. Is where your numerator is equal to 0. So in this case, it's really easy to solve that you're going to have it at negative 2. And here we have something interesting happening. Okay. Vertical asymptotes are for non-permissible values, so your graph will never, ever pass through a vertical asymptote. A horizontal asymptote is for extremes and behavior. And sometimes, as in this case, our graph is going to pass through the horizontal asymptote in the middle. Horizontal asymptotes don't represent non-permissible values. They just talk about what happens at extremes. So in this case, a lot of students feel like I've done something wrong because I got negative 2, 0, and it's on my horizontal asymptote. That is okay. This one, we are going to need a fair number of additional nice points. Okay? Why? We have three sections. We have points in the middle. We do not have any points larger than x equals 1. So one of the nice points you're going to plug in is x equals 2 and see what you get. You don't have anything less than x equals negative 8. So another nice point we're going to plug in is negative 8. And we're going to have to figure out one other nice point, but we'll do these ones first. So remember that your equation was y equals x plus 2. And I'll write the factors for them. x plus 7, x minus 1. If you plug in 2, can you see that you would get a 4 in that top? You'd get a 9 here and a 1 there if you plugged in 2. So that reduces to 4 ninths. So I have the point 2 comma 4 ninths. I can put that onto my graph. 2 comma 4 ninths. Same thing with negative 8. 
just a little bit of mental math here. If I plug in negative 8, I get negative 6 up top there. Uh, this will be negative 1. And this will be negative 9. That simplifies to negative 6 over 9 or negative 2 thirds. So I can label that point. And I'm going to have the point at negative 8, negative 2 thirds. And now in this section, one point is enough to draw towards the asymptotes. In this far section, one point is enough to draw towards the asymptotes. And in this middle section, while these two have to connect, this has to go down towards the asymptote. But now I have a bit of an unknown. I don't know at this point, should I go up towards the asymptote or down towards the asymptote? To solve that, one of the best ways to solve that is to add another nice point. So, okay, well, what happens if I add negative 6 just on this side of negative 7? I'll plug that in. And you see that if you add negative 6, the top would be negative 4. This bracket would be 1. And this bracket would be negative 7. Does that make sense? And if I simplify negative 4 over negative 7, I get 4, 7. So I can add that point. Negative 6 comma 4, 7, which means when I connect, it had to go up rather than down. The other thing that sometimes students use as a hint to know that that goes up, what is the multiplicity of this x-intercept? Only one. Multiplicities of one, your graph goes straight through. If it was a multiplicity of two, then it would bounce and come back down. So we can use a little bit of stuff from other units as well. Please circle questions six and seven.